Hello everyone, my name is Holly from Idaho here in the United States. And during this hour, we are going to talk about dis diplomatic language. So um, this is uh, an interesting topic because uh, it is it, very difficult for even native speakers sometimes to be diplomatic and to be able to say what you mean in a polite way. So come on in and let's practice English together. <clears throat> Hello, V. How are you this this afternoon, or is it morning still? <laughs> yes, it's still morning. Morning. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Good. So, how has your week been? Um, my weekend. Week. Week. How is your week? Ah, week. How's your week been? Um, you know, this week, yeah, uh, the weather got colder than uh, before, so I think uh -huh. uh, most of us. Got uh, a cold. Got a flu. Got a cold. Oh no! Yeah. Got a cold. Yeah. Oh. Got a cold. So and, uh, I maybe I like your you before. I have some problem with my throat, uh, and uh, yeah. I have a sore throat. Oh um, no! Yeah, when I wake up in the early morning, it's really dry. So mm. I really hate that feeling. But uh, today. There's a little sunshine, so I feel good. I feel better. Yeah. So when when it's cold, when you when you say it's cold in Vietnam, what does that mean? What is cold? <laughs> yeah, because About we 10 are ten degrees or yeah, or more than ten, um, maybe uh, thirteen or fourteen, uh -huh. fourteen degrees okay. yeah, Celsius yeah. degree. Because yeah. normally we uh, the the temperature here is. 30, 30 in the spring and uh, 40 in the summer. So uh -huh. when it drops uh, more than uh, 15 degrees, so it's very awful to all of us. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's what I thought because I've learned that between 10 and 20, for some people they think it's warm and some people think it's cold. Yeah, <laughs> but everybody it's cold, agrees. Yeah. Everybody yeah. agrees under 10 is cold. <laughs> so. uh -huh. Yeah, and hello again, Andre. Andre from Brazil. <laughs> Hi, Holly. Hello again. Nice to see you. Um, do you know V? Uh, v, no, this is no. Andre. It's He's from Brazil. Time. And yeah, uh, yeah. I think, Andre, no, normally when you t have taken my classes, it's been in the afternoon, hasn't it? Actually, I I have not a specific time to take classes. Ah, uh -huh. uh, I I just want to get them more often. Uh huh. Take more more classes. All right. Excellent. Well, this is V from Vietnam, and she's she usually uh, it's uh, it's late morning, early afternoon in in Vietnam, so she's uh -huh. taking class. So, and for for you, it's is it one a.m. or two a.m. Yeah, 2 a.m. Yeah, wow. then I'm I'm cooking <laughs> all my maybe it's a dinner. Oh, okay. Uh, I totally understand that. I uh, for a while there I was uh, going to bed about four or five in the morning and <laughs> getting up about one or two, but um, I'm not doing that anymore. So um, yeah, because tomorrow I have to work from midnight to 8 a.m. Uh -huh. So I'm getting my body ready. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I did that for the, for about th the last two and a half or three weeks. I've been doing that. Now now I'm back to getting up earlier in the morning and and going to bed earlier. So yeah, that's um, better. Yeah, excellent. All right, and hello again, Francisco. Nice How's to see you, you again. Doing? And I, I guess I don't need to ask you for a third time, how was your day, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think I know how your day was. I, excellent. Um, so 
during this hour, it, it's kind of it's uh, kind of uh, what we kind of talked about during the last class. And Ovi, you weren't there, but Andre and Francisco were. And that's a diplomatic language. Uh, if you guys remember the phrase, "I'm afraid," um, I'm afraid. I, I, th I can't remember the phrase now. It started with "I'm afraid," and and then it, then it goes to uh, I, I, "I'm afraid I don't agree." And that's very diplomatic. So during this hour, we're going to actually be talking about uh, being able to say things like "you don't agree." Uh, or you uh, y you're unhappy with something, but in a very very diplomatic way. So, hello, Aaron. How are you? I'm fine. I am good. Good. Remind me, you are from Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's still early for you too. Okay. Excellent. Uh -huh. All right. So what we're gonna do? What we're gonna start out with? Um, is we're going to start out with adjectives for describing attitude, but I just thought of a question as a warm-up. Um, do you find it easy to be diplomatic in your own language? V, is it easy for you to be diplomatic in your own language? Uh, no, because I'm not good at striking up a conversation. Okay. So it, yeah, it's hard for me to, uh, to define the world, I think. Uh, it's hard for you to express express how you think. Um, the, maybe it uh, normally it takes me a while to think <laughs> how to start. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But okay. if I already in the, the discussion side, maybe it's easier. It's easier. Yeah. yeah. I've I've I know that when I ask you a direct question, you always have something to say. So, but for you, it's harder to start it than it is yeah. for it to. Yeah. If somebody else. Okay. All right. And uh, Francisco, how about you? Is it easy for you to be diplomatic in your own language in Spanish? Yeah, or is it, no. is it easy? No, for me it's hard too because most of the time I'm in front of the computer. So I'm not good speaking. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Thank you. Andre, how about you? Is it easy for you to be diplomatic in your own language? Yes. For me, it's really easy. No, just joking. Actually, it's really <laughs> difficult for me, and nothing for me is easy. Everything oh, okay. I need to make a lot of effort. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Aaron, how about you? Is it easy for you to be diplomatic in your own language? Um. No, it's not easy because um, in my job, uh, usually we are uh, joking or. Um, we will very uh, common language. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And and remember, diplomatic language is is really being able to say something negative in a more positive way. Um, I personally, when when I'm upset about something, I have a very very hard time being diplomatic, <laughs> and it's something that I have had to learn. And what and what amazing to me is how one of the ways that I've learned to be di diplomatic is by uh, by through my English teaching and through these lessons. I, I learn a little bit more about my own language and how to be diplomatic when I need to be, because I have a tendency to be very straightforward and honest and being diplomatic you're still being honest but you're not being straightforward um, so hey okay, now let's let's uh, look at these adjectives for describing attitude we're gonna match the following adjectives with their definitions but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the words on the on the left hand side and I'm gonna have you guys read the definitions on the right and then match it so we have the word tactful direct honest Rude, respectful, polite, persuasive, encouraging, and supportive. Um, v, would you read letter A here and match that to uh, the correct word? Yeah, behave in a socially correct way that shows you are thinking about the other people's feelings. Okay, so remember behaving. 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 Um, Thinking about other people, um, honest. Mm, no. Um, respectful. Yes, it's respectful. Okay, and Francisco, can you read B? 
respectful with where? A uh, letter no. A. A with ah uh, okay with five okay. Yeah, because because you're behaving in a socially correct way, and it shows that you're thinking about other people, um, okay. other, other people's feelings. So okay, letter B, Francisco, can you read that one? Francisco, I wonder if you're having a technical error. Hopefully he'll be back. So Andre, could you read letter B? Yes, I'm sorry because I have so many devices over here. I'm trying uh -huh. to manage all, all of them. Uh -huh. But uh, okay, B, behaving in an offensive in an offensive way, not polite. And so what uh, would that rude. be? For, rude. Rude. Yeah. For. Absolutely. So if you are behaving in a in an offensive way or you're not polite, that is rude. Okay, uh, letter C. Aaron, could you read that that one? I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> careful not to say or do anything that could upset or offend someone. This tactful number tactful. one. Perfect. Tactful. All right. And uh, letter D. Um, v. Could you read that one? Uh, giving help. Letter nine, no number nine. Supportive. Supportive is giving help. Absolutely. All right. And uh, uh, Francisco, are you able to speak now? Okay. Still cannot hear you. Um, not sure why, but I know you know how to use a computer, so you can know how to fix it. <laughs> so, Andre, letter E. Yes, eight, encouraging. Okay, could you read the read the definition, please? Making someone feel more confident. Eight, eight, encouraging. encouraging. Very good. Encouraging, yes. Yes, encouraging. And letter so bad, F. so bad. Uh, Pronunciation. I uh, know your pronunciation is very good, actually. Uh, You're fine. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aaron, letter F. Letter F, saying what you think without worrying about other people's opinion. Is honest, number three. Honest. Um, That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, well, bear with me. Let me. There's another one that it could be. A direct. See, showing politeness and telling, yeah. So it's direct, actually. So if you are direct, you're saying exactly what you think. Usually, when you're direct, you're also honest. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's and that's one of the reasons. If, uh, the reasons I have a hard time being tactful because I can be very direct. <laughs> so, um, V, can you read letter G? Showing politeness and care towards someone who is considered important. Mm, polite? Yes. Polite. But I think being polite, I don't know why this one would be here. Uh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, I'm thinking this is kind of an option. <laughs> Unless, because er mm -hmm. everybody is important. Mm -hmm. So, all right, letter H. Um, Andre. Talking in a special way to make somebody want to do something or believe in something you want them to believe. Persuasive. Persuasive, seven. yes. Persuasive. Excellent. And then the final one, Aaron, letter I. Telling the truth is honest. Yes. Tell, okay, and, and this is uh, telling the truth. So you need to pronounce the T-H, truth. Do you know how to do the T-H sound? Truth. 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 How do you do that kind of sound? Okay. Yeah, let me let me quickly show you a, a good way to do that. The T-H sound can be problematic. And I'm going to show my face today, you guys, and I don't know if I, if I actually look okay, so bear with me. <laughs> so, okay, truth. So usually when you have when you use a th sound you have to make sure that the tongue goes out of the mouth truth 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 it's it's truth. easier with like theater theater truth truth, truth. the truth. truth 
Leave so it ends, it ends yeah, your tongue is out of your mouth, but not too far. I, I had one person who I worked with this one time, and he was like saying, the theater. <laughs> but So you don't pull your, really take your tongue out. It's quickly, and your your lips are usually before it, before it the, uh, the truth. So you, you see that truth? So, um, yeah, a lot of exercise with the, the muscles, yeah, to get this, this pronunciation exactly. So, if you if, if that's something, uh, especially for those of you who are also watching the recording, if you have problems with the th sound, um, I've had students what they'll do is they'll get a, a tongue twister and then they'll practice with that. Once they realize that the teeth that the tongue goes past your teeth. That helps, but then go, using a tongue twister uh, also makes it easy. Uh, one that might work for you guys would be three free throws. Basketball tongue twister, but if you say three free yeah, throws, don't, three don't free throws, throws yeah. three free throws, <laughs> say it three times fast, it might it might help. All right, so let let's go ahead and turn the camera off again and. Uh, go back to the exercise. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and talk about this. But before we before we practice these words, let's look at the opposites of tactful, direct, honest, and supportive. Okay, so what is a uh, V? Can you can you think of what the opposites of tactful would be? What would the opposite uh, be? Tactless. Yes, tactless. Tactless. So if the opposite of tactful is tactless. All right. And um, Andre, can you think of the opposite of direct? Yes, direct. Oh, it looks like he just fell out. So Aaron, can you think of the opposite of direct? Um, on direct. Okay. It's not on, it's in. Indirect. Okay. And welcome back, Andre. Yes. So could you give can you give us the, uh, the opposite for honest? Honest. Uh, the opposite is let me see telling the truth. Okay. But what uh, can you think of a word? One word that means uh, and and actually the opposite of uh, the opposite of honest would be not telling the truth, but what is one word for that? Can you think uh, of that? Okay. Liar. With a prefix. For liar would be one. And oh, actually, we're looking for one with a prefix. And this is the word dishonest. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the liar is uh, is a it's noun, not, and not an adjective. Uh, yeah, it's also not polite. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> to call someone a liar. Okay. Uh, so V, what would the word? What it would be the opposite of supportive? Unsupportive. Unsupportive. Okay, all right. And Andre, do you ha can you think of a synonym for the word rude? Rude. A yeah, synonym. A synonym. Yeah. Uh, maybe I don't know many synonyms, but mm -hmm. maybe would be uh, rude. Maybe would be heavy. Um. No, it's not heavy. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, adjective, adjective. Yeah. So, uh, rude, uh, maybe uh, you are impolite. Okay, yeah, very close. It's impolite. Ah, impolite, okay. Impolite. So that would be a synonym for, for the word rude. And actually, I think that the word impolite is actually more diplomatic and better th than if you were to say a rude. Okay. So, all right. So let's go ahead and, and discuss these words, and then we're going to practice it a little, a little bit. Um, can you think of, um, V, can you think of somebody who... Um, was was very um, tactful. Can you yeah. think of an example of someone who was very tactful? Uh, I think uh, they are the hosts of some uh, game shows. Oh, really? Yeah, because they have to meet so many people and uh, they also need to create a friendly environment to draw 
the attention of audience, so mm -hmm. they should be nice and should be careful in their speaking. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Andre, are, do you have a ten are, you, are you as a person, are you, uh, do you have a tendency to be direct and honest, or are you able to say things more, di more, more diplomatically? Uh, it depends on the situation, and I used to be much more diplomatic before. Now I, I'm really more direct. Mm -hmm. but it depends on the situation. Uh, I always wish to be more diplomatic, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, thank you. And um, Aaron, um, do you can are you fair? Uh, do you find yourself uh, fairly persuasive? Can you talk people into doing things or believing in things, or um, are you not very persuasive? Uh, I feel that I am no uh, persuasive persuasive person. Uh huh. So so you're not a persuasive person. No, um, because I it's hard to me to speak to other people to uh -huh. okay to combine so, them. So all three of you guys have said it's hard for you to start conversations and speak and things like that. Do you find going to English class online easier uh, e easier to speak because people can't see you? Yes, I think so. Is that, I, yeah. Because it's so interesting because you seem so outgoing, V. I, I would never have thought that you had a hard, would be shy, have a hard time no. speaking. Yeah. yeah. How about I, you? I do. Oh. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying, V? Yeah, because I, I think when I when I meet some foreigners out here, I normally personally I think they are like holy or some teachers are rubbly, but uh, in the real life they look so distant, and it's mm -hmm. like they come from another culture. So mm -hmm. it's very hard for me to strike up a conversations with them. And uh, mm -hmm. also, uh, if they come here, they more um, protective. I don't know if it's the... Uh, uh, I, I forgot that word, but they're not open. Mm. So maybe okay. opposite of... Okay. Uh, opposite of open would be well. It depends on uh, depends on really what you're meaning by open. But I think the word you're thinking of is reserved. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, reserved. Yeah, that word. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because because okay. uh, the other one would be, um, for example, you have uh, there's reserve open and reserved, and then the other one would be open-minded and closed-minded. Yeah. So, I think uh, the word uh, deserved is the best. Yeah. yeah. Close-minded, which are complete. But I think you were meaning this one, uh, the one uh, open and reserved. All right, Andre. How about you? Uh, do you find, uh, since you said that you have a hard time sometimes speaking, do you find um, studying online easier and speaking English, since nobody can speak, see you? I don't know. I don't know. I it depends on the moment uh -huh. when I had my experiences before with English face to face classes. It was really difficult, and I guess uh, online is nice. And I mm -hmm. uh, what what could I say? Uh, what did you ask me? Sorry. Oh, uh, well, both, all three of you said that you find it very difficult to speak, um, to talk about things and start conversations. Um, you know, you're kind of, the, all three of you said you were very, fairly reserved and shy. Um, so it, are you finding, do you find um, online classes easier to speak English because, uh, because nobody sees you? Uh, okay, I guess it's uh, you have a lot of opportunities to try. You know, uh -huh. when you are in an English class uh, in a school, for example, you have this this kind of society, and you know mm -hmm. the level of everyone and something mm -hmm. like that, and it's established. But mm -hmm. online, you can try, you can try, you can make mistakes a lot, and you can try, and you can improve, and but you. You must be resilient, you know, mm. and you must uh, be persistent. 
Mm -hmm. So I okay. guess you, if you are persistent and resilient, you can. The results are better may, may, maybe in the online platform than in the school because schools, you know, I mean, I guess uh, uh, a, a mm -hmm. private class is nice, but maybe mm -hmm. in a group, if you have a, a certain level, it's fine. But if you, mm -hmm. you, you know where you are, you will be traveling. Yeah, it it is. Yeah, it, I think I I think you're absolutely right. The private classes are really nice because you can actually target on the specific person's um, um, the person's needs and so forth. So yeah, when you, one of the things you said is in the classes or in the face to face classes, there's a specific society, and actually you were you were actually meaning culture. So a uh, specific culture in the class where you might not feel comfortable speaking. All right. Um, how about you, Aaron? Do you, do you find online classes or a private classes, um, it, it, it basically studying online easier than speaking face-to-face -face with somebody in English? Um, I, I think that online is, is more easy. Uh -huh. We we not have uh, the necessary the necessary to speak to speak, but mm -hmm. uh, face to face. Sorry. Uh huh. Um, in online form is 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 a good idea because uh, the quality of the classes mm -hmm. is hard to find in in my country. Ah okay, that's, the, teacher, that's the quality of the teacher is hard to find. They are, uh huh. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, and you can get a lot of a uh, lot of different uh, teachers, uh, types of teachers online because they're, we're all over the world, and especially with the private classes and stuff. All right. So I was just kind of curious about that one. Okay. Now let's look at the these. We have um, uh, these adjectives to describe people. Say how you would try or try not to behave in each of the following situations. You would say. I would try or I would try not to be and then one of the uh, one or more of the adjectives above okay so number one um, Aaron you are a secretary talking to an important person so what would you try to be or not be uh, not be no. I would, you would try not to be what uh, customer. So the options is tactful, direct, honest, and supportive. Uh, the options, okay. Yeah, uh, up here. The words up here. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. Is that uh, tactless? And so, so you would say, I would try not to be tactless. I will try to not be tactless. So I would try not to be tactless. Okay. Yeah. All right. And how about you, Andre? If you are sec a secretary talking to an important person or an important customer, what would you try to be or try not to be? Uh, uh, I would not. No. I would, would try not. I would try not. That's a new expression for me because I always okay. make mistakes using the words. Uh, I would. Okay. I would try not to be. Uh, mm, uh, rude. Yeah, I would try not to be rude. Very good. V, how about maybe, you? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe not. I, I think most people try not to be rude, but who knows? Uh, yeah, no, no, sometimes. <laughs> it depends on the, the relationship between the two, both parts, you know. True. But I guess politeness is always welcome, no? Uh-huh, okay. And um, Avi, how about you? If you were a secretary talking to an important customer, what would you try to be or try not to be? Yeah, I, I try to be... I would? I would try to be uh, persuasive. Persuasive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because uh, most of um, the goals of my job is to 
persuade other people to agree with our options. Ah, okay. All right. Thank you. Number two, Aaron, your best friend is very unhappy at work. You think a he should quit and find a new job. So what would you try not to be or try to be? Uh, I will try to be uh, honest with and um, direct. Uh huh. On, direct and honest with him. Okay, perfect. And um, Andre, how about you? What would you try to be with your uh, try try to be or try not to be with your best friend? I would try to be direct with him. Hmm. Okay. Excellent. And V, what would you try to be or try not to be? I would try to be uh, encouraging to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I would try to be persuasive because I want I want him to find a new job. So I would try to be persuasive. Um, so all right. N number three. And um, Aaron, an important customer calls you to complain about something. What would you try not to be or try to be? Uh, I will try to be uh, tactful. Um, mm -hmm. Um, uh, polite, so polite, uh, mm -hmm. persuasive. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, I will not uh, try to I be would... uh, direct. Uh huh. Okay. I would try not to be direct. I, I so will not try to be. I would try not. Try I not. I would try, try not. not to I will not try to be. Yeah. Okay. I would try not to be. I think you're getting it confused. Um, it, so I would try, or I would I would try not to be. Okay, Andre, how about you? What would you try to be, or try not to be, uh, with the customer that calls in and complains about everything all the time? <laughs> uh, at this moment, I. I would try to be honest. Mm -hmm. You would try to be honest. Oh, perfect. All right. And Avi, how about you? Would you? What would you try to be or try not to be to the yeah. complaining customer? I would try not to be rude and try to be uh, supportive because I want to be the right a solution for both of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think another good word that isn't on here for that situation is I would try to be proactive. Yes, proactive. Uh, because I know in that situation for me, I try to be proactive. And like what, what V said is um, she thought, uh, she said I would try to find a solution. So being proactive is, a, is, is where you already have a solution. You already have something set up. And you're thinking ahead instead of being, uh, the opposite of being proactive is being reactive. And that's where uh, you uh, aren't thinking ahead about uh, different problems, and therefore you don't have a solution. So all you have is, is all you can do is react to the issue, and but you don't have a solution. So this is solution-minded, and this is reaction-minded. So it's a word I learned in in business when I was taking business classes at university. <laughs> so, all right, number four, um, Aaron, you ordered a washing machine to be delivered to your home. It never arrived. You visit the store to complain. What would you try to be or try not to be? Aaron, are you there? Uh, yeah, I am here. Okay, so, no worries. Uh, I will try to be angry, uh, aggressive. Uh, you would try to be angry and aggressive. Okay. <laughs> very upset with my uh, washing machine fell shoe. Would would because uh, I uh, it's a, that's interesting that you said I would try to be angry and aggressive because I think that that's definitely not diplomatic, but. Um, I've learned that in some cultures that works, but in other cultures it doesn't work. Um, in yes, Mexico, yes. is it is it does it work to be angry and aggressive? Yes, here it works very well. Uh, okay. 
All right, that's that's interesting. I, the countries I've worked in, um, it doesn't work. <laughs> Lived in, it doesn't work at all. In the state, in the states, it will work ha part of the time. Sometimes it will work, and sometimes it will not work. Uh, so that's interesting. So Andre, how about you? You ordered a washing machine to be delivered to your home. It never arrived. You visit the store to complain. What yes, would you I. Sorry. You go on. Uh, I had this problem last month. Oh, really? Uh, what did yes. you do? Yes. Actually, it was not with my washing machine, but was with my... Uh, I don't know the name of this thing that you put your clothes in. Um, uh, it's a, well, that's a washing machine. Is it? Do, yeah. Are you drying or washing it? No, no. When you, when you store your clothes, uh, armory. Oh, armory. okay. Um... Uh, a, a dresser. A dresser. Yeah. yeah so okay. I try it to be polite and respectful, mm -hmm. but it didn't work here in Brazil and in my place with this company. So I needed to be really rude and impolite when impolite. I started to impolite. Yes, impolite, and I started doing being impolite and rude, things work as well. Uh huh. That's that's amazing. <laughs> so, okay. Yes. So when I go to Me when I go to Mexico and Brazil, I might have to be strong. <laughs> you know, and and a Swiss girlfriend uh, teach me teach me this like yeah. Uh, so I I used to be really polite and but you uh -huh. know I I don't know if it's really. I, a Swiss told me, I don't know, I, I don't know what's better. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right, thank you. V, um, how about you? Um, you ordered a washing machine to be, to be delivered to your home. It never arrived. You visit the store to complain. So how do you respond to that? I, I would try to, to be direct and uh, bold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, now, yeah. In, mm -hmm. now, if you got angry and aggressive, um, like the guys here, would that work in Vietnam? Uh, sometimes we need to say out loud because uh, mm -hmm. you know that at the time there are so many customers, so they can uh, um, have some delay. So you should be aggressive a little bit, I think. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right, thank you. All right, number five, um, Aaron, one of your colleagues has to give his first presentation and is rather nervous. You have a lot of experience. So what? how would you respond to him? Uh, I, I try to, uh, to be polite uh -huh. about uh, his mistakes. Uh -huh. and try to, uh, to be uh, encouraging. People. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enc uh, encouraging. Uh -huh. Encouraging and respectful people, person. R r encouraging and respectful. Okay. Now, Andre, how about you? What, what, how would you respond with this? One of your colleagues has to give his first presentation is, and is rather nervous. You have a lot of experience. Yes, I, I'm not. I'm not in uh, watching the same screen, but supportive will uh -huh. match with. Supportive will match with which? Uh, well, that would be um, uh, supportive. Oh, let's see. Supportive means uh, giving help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, totally supportive with uh -huh. the situation. Yeah, so you would offer help and let him practice in front of you and things like yeah. that. All right. Um, Whatever he needs. Okay, excellent. And V, how about you? What would you do if one of your colleagues has to give his first presentation and is really nervous? Yeah, uh, so I would try to be uh, encouraging and uh, supportive. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, next one. Uh, Aaron, you lose your company mobile, mobile phone. You have to tell your boss. What would you be in this situation? Uh, well, uh, I I will uh, I will say I will say the truth the truth 
Uh, I would I would try to be honest, okay? I, I will try to be honest uh, and direct. And direct, uh, direct sorry, and honest. Uh, I lost my cell phone. Do you give me another one, please? No, so you direct. So t it sounds like what what you just described. Also tactful and respectful. <laughs> so <laughs> excellent. All right, and Andre, how about you? What would you do if you lost your company mobile phone, or in American English, company cell phone, and you have to tell your boss? I would be polite, and I would excuse him for this situation, and this will never happen again. Uh huh. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And you would you would um, be polite, and then you would. Uh, not excuse the situation, but you would um, promise that this would never happen again. Yes, okay. for sure, for sure. Yeah, perfect. All right, V. How about you? If you uh, what would you? Uh, how would you? Uh, what yeah. would you try to do, <laughs> or try not to do? Um, I uh, I would try to be honest, and I would try not to be coward to tell my boss the truth. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Thank you. And the last one here, um, Aaron, you are a salesman. You call a potential customer to try to sell them your company's products. So, uh, how? What would you try? Try to be or try not to be? Uh, I will try to be uh, uh, persuasive. Uh huh. The characteristics uh, of the product. Mm hmm uh, Trying okay. to. To be honest with the good, uh, with the good features about the products, mm -hmm. uh, okay. I I I will try to not be uh, rude. Mm -hmm. I try to be polite, so polite. Okay, awesome. All right, and Aaron, how about you? What would you try to be? Uh, what? Not Aaron, I mean, sorry, Andre. Andrea. Aaron just respons responded. Andre. Yes. I would try to be rude and say really? to the customer, yes, don't buy this product because this <laughs> product, yes, this product I, will make you a better person, so don't buy this. You need a I, bad thing. I think you're being sarcastic, aren't you? I <laughs> know, so. yeah, but sometimes, I mean, in politics, you know, sometimes you have to say, oh, don't vote on me because I will get your more education. So uh -huh. it's like, uh, in Brazil, it's like this. Sometimes you have to do the opposite to get the opposite, you know. I see. So but don't, not really, don't, yeah, sarcastic, don't yeah. So don't vote for me because I'll, I'll get you, uh, I, I'll, I'll lower taxes and I'll get you the right education. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It. So, oh. It's not rude, it's not rude, it's like yeah. uh, on, uh, no, it's, I don't know what is this, but. It's, it's, uh, an, it, it's an ironic humor is what it is, it's, it's it being ironic is, is how, to, how to describe that. And, yeah, and but you, if you want to sell something, you, you must mm -hmm. focus in the, the needs of the customers, exactly. not in the product, yeah, so yeah. I would so, try to be tactful. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, thank you. And um, V, how about you? You are a salesman, you call a potential customer to try to sell them your company's products. Yeah, personally, I, I, try, I would try to be polite and, and, uh, and, and then persuasive because mm -hmm. without this skill, I cannot persuade them to, uh, to sell our products. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so now let's, let's see uh, if we can match these sentences here um, with... Uh, with these uh, situ situations there. So we've got seven situations and um, let's see seven situations and six sentences. So one might not match. So uh, number one, V, could you read this one and see see if you can find um, yeah. Yeah. the correct one? Don't worry, everyone makes mistakes at this time. 
Okay. So what situation would that be? Uh, one of your colleagues has to give his first presentation. It's rather nervous. We have a lot of experience. Perfect. And so, in this respect, he's being uh, he's being supportive. All right, Andre, could you read number two? Yes. Get lost. We don't need your help here. <laughs> okay. Now, um, w uh, uh, which um, word here is he being? Get lost. We don't need your help here. Uh, honest. He's being okay. He's being honest, and he is being direct. Direct, direct, and honest, and direct. Yes. No, and no, and no, no, no. Direct and honest. Road okay. is uh, other side. Probably w would think that, but yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would think if somebody said that to me, I would think they were being rude. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, I, I don't think that we uh, have a situation here, so I think we're going to match it with the, the adjectives, not with the situation. So we're matching it with the adjective. So number one is supportive. Supportive. And two is direct, honest, and rude. And Holly, can I ask? Uh, yeah. Um, get lost and get out. Aren't they the same? Yes. And get lost is is really. I mean, if you said that in a business situation to, unless you're being, unless you have developed a really, really fun rapport. Yeah, it depends uh, on the moment. It if, depends if you on the moment. A, yeah. If you're in a plane crash, for example. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We don't need your help here. Yeah. Well, it does depend on the situation. If you're if you're joking around with your mates, your work, your col your class, your classmates, or your workmates, and this would be no problem. But if you said that to a customer, in general, um, in general, yes, yeah. in general. Yeah. All right. So number three, Aaron, could you read that one? Uh, we are prepared to offer you a, a, a 15 discount for the first month. Uh, okay. Here is trying to be um, uh, persuasive. Okay. So, yeah, we are prepared to offer you a 15% discount for the first month. So he is being persuasive. Yes. Spaceship. Okay, and a V, number four. Four, please have a seat, sir. Would you like a coffee while you wait? So what would that be? Um, I think maybe... Uh, it's very polite, polite. no? Yeah. Sorry. It's... It's yeah. I think it's polite and respectful. It's not polite that I I I spoke in when the question was not for me. Yeah, but that's okay. I, yeah. Okay. I think uh, V's okay with it, so she'll do it to you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So polite and respectful. So um, uh, V, why don't you do number five <laughs> since Andre did number four? Um, I think you should quit your job. It's clearly giving you too much stress. Maybe something uh, related to my friend. Uh huh. Uh, yes, it's my friend, and and he's being what? Supportive. Um, Chris, supportive, persuasive. Mm hmm. And uh, direct. Okay. Yes. Persuasive, direct, and honest. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, Andre, number six. Yes, I can't help you. I'm too busy. Ask someone else. Uh, encouraging. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So I can't help you. I'm too busy. Ask somebody else. That is, would be, it would be direct. It would be okay. honest. And it would be rude. So this is basically our tactless. 
So you're uh, you, you just are, do not have a lot of tact when you when you say that to them. It is it is really direct and honest. But when you're when you're being diplomatic, it, it if, if for example I have uh, called uh, like one time I called a travel agent when I was in Finland, and that's exactly what the person said to you said to me. I can't help you. I'm too busy. Ask. A call. And she said, I can't yeah. help you. I'm too busy. Call back. And I said, okay, I will call somebody else. <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, I okay. Yeah. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some uh, useful structures for what we're going to look at, at is how you can make things a little bit more soft. So when we want to be careful not to upset or offend someone or to be more persuasive, special, tactful, or diplomatic language is often used to soften what we want to say. Yeah, we have to use more words. Yes, definitely. Underline the words, phrases, and structures that, oh, okay, um, we're not going to do the, de uh, yeah, I guess we do, that are used in the second dialogue to soften the language. So we have to read the read the dialogues. I was going to skip this. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and, and read dialogue number one and dialogue number two and see which one is a little bit more diplomatic and, and soft. So uh, V, w why don't you read A, and Aaron, could you read B? Yeah, there is a problem. Well, the unit price you suggested is too high compared to our competitors' prices. Three euros would be better. Thirty euros would be better. Oh, no, no. Uh, our production costs are very high. You know, we pay a lot. But it will be more difficult to sell to our customers. You didn't really market research report. According to the report, uh, customers will be prepared to pay a slightly higher price thanks. We offer a more durable product than other manufacturers. manufacturers. Can you email me that report? I've lost my copy. I am busy at the moment. My secretary should be able to help you out. All right, thank you. Now let's now let's look at dialogue number two. Um, Andre, would you read A and I will read B? Yes. There seems to be a slight problem. What sort of problem? Well, it seems the unit price you suggested is a bit too high compared to our competitors' prices. Wouldn't thirty euros be better? Not really. Our production costs are pretty high, you know. But won't it be a bit more difficult to sell to our customers? It seems you didn't read the market research report. According to the report, uh, customers would be prepared to pay a slightly higher price since we offer a more durable product than other manufacturers. Could you email me that report? It appears I've missed my copy. Oh, so misplaced. It's placed. Um, I'm afraid I'm a little. Okay. <coughs> no worries. I'm afraid I'm a little busy at the moment. My secretary should be able to help you out. So, all right. So let's look at at the different different. First of all, uh, what do you think, V? What do you think is more polite, dialogue one or dialogue two? Yeah, dialogue two. Yeah, because dialogue one is just way too direct. So dialogue dialogue two is more polite. I, I agree because what we've done in this in dialogue two is they have used softening languages. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at these uh, look at uh, let's underline the words, phrases, and structures that are used in the second dialogue to soften the language. So um, a letter a letter A here, uh, the first one, Andre. What what uh, do they do to make that more soft? Yes, I. What I, words? My mobile is not possible to have a a perfect class with my mobile here. Oh, okay. But uh, I, I I have to match what? No, just and when you look at dialogue two, what uh, words did they add to make it more soft? Ah, okay. Soft language. 
uh, there seems to be a slight problem. There, where? So the words are seems to be and a slight. Ah, okay. So slight. There seems to be a slight problem. Oh, yeah. I could say in a polite way. Yeah, well, that place. is polite. That is polite. Okay, there is. Yeah. Oh, that's very polite. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you say there is a problem, or there seems to be a slight problem, what 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 you're doing here is uh, softening the message. You're, okay. You, is light solace. is light is what? A uh, small. Ah, okay. A small problem. There is a problem, uh, and then uh, we have a little problem here. Yeah. We have a little problem here, and it might be a big problem, but you still say a little problem. So, yes. and the and the the rule in, in in when you want to soften your language, if you use slight before some, a negative word, like a slight problem or a little problem or a small problem, even though it is a big problem, it just kind of softens it, and it doesn't feel as negative when you are actually doing it. Uh, um, okay, I uh, we've got. Uh, Really small problem here. Mm, okay, yeah, okay. we've got a really small problem here, or we've. Got, I think in this respect, we've got a really slight problem. Might might still might be better. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. So okay, we've got what sort of problem? Of course, that um, sort of it comes from slight. Okay, so when somebody says we have a slight problem, well, what sort of problem is that? Up here, it's, there is a problem. What problem? So this is very, very yeah. straightforward. But I mean, this is a bit okay. softer. Yes, you could say like, uh, could you tell me what kind of problem we have mm -hmm. been having here? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Aaron, letter A here. It says, well, it seems the unit price you suggested is a bit too high compared to our competitors' prices. Wouldn't 30 euros be better? So which one of these, what, what words here do you think are, have made it soft? Uh, it seems. Mm -hmm. It's a perception. Yeah, a bit. It's, huh. it's a bit. Uh huh. It's a little, little too high. Yeah, it's not like, like slight. Too soft. Uh huh. Um, that's all. And also, when you change it to a question, and so, so it's this in the top. It says thirty euros would be better. So instead of instead of saying your opinion. 30 euros would be better. You change it to a question and you say, okay. wouldn't 30 euros be better? Okay. So that's that's softening it. So it makes it makes it think like, you know, I'm thinking this way. Uh, what do you think? Um, v, we have not really. Our production pr costs are pretty high, you know. So what, what makes this a little bit more s softer? Uh, not really and pretty. Yeah, not really and then pretty. Perfect. All right, uh, Andre. But it won't be a bit more difficult to sell. But won't it be a bit more difficult to sell to our customers? What? How, what? How did that? What are the words that make this a little bit softer? Uh, want. Mm hmm. It's because you were there. Uh huh. And bit. Bit. Yeah. So won't because you've made it a question. So when you're trying to be diplomatic, if you make it a question and the person goes, "Oh yeah, I see it your way," um, all right, and and then uh, letter B, uh, we're running out of time, so I'm going to go this real quick. It seems it seems always makes things a little bit softer when you write it. So it seems you didn't read the market research report. Um, see. Uh, customers would be prepared to pay a slightly higher price uh, since we are a more durable product than other manufacturers. Uh, could you email me that report? Uh, it appears uh, I've misplaced my copy instead of saying I've lost my copy. Copy. It appears I've misplaced my hot po coffee. Copy. And then the last one, I'm afraid. I'm a little busy. Um, instead of I'm busy at the moment, if you say I'm afraid, what that does is that 
that uh, you you are helping the the person the listener know that you're going to going to be denying that request. So I'm afraid I'm a little busy at the moment. Um, all right, everyone. I do want to thank you very much for your participation. I have another class right now, so. Um, uh, so I'll see you then hopefully later or um, at, during a different day. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Holly. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.